Good morning. Good to see you again this morning. I hope you're well for another weekend. <clears throat> we are in Matthew 4, 4. Um, Jesus has just been tempted by the enemy, the tempter, to turn the stones around him in the desert into loaves of bread because he was hungry and uh, and whatever prompted that whether it was simply provision for the moment shall I spend my life making sure I have everything I need or whether it was um, shall I do uh, wonderful acts of provision for the people living at this time so that nobody ever goes hungry again and people will realize then who I am and the power that I have. But the answer that Jesus gave was pure scripture taken from Deuteronomy 4, no, Deuteronomy 8, 3, verse 4, Jesus answered, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now the reference there is to the provision of manna and every other need that they had while they were in the wilderness. Uh, that chapter, the beginning of that chapter, Deuteronomy 8, God reminds them, tells them to be careful to remember what he had done for them in the wilderness, how he had provided food every day, manna and quail, and how all the, in all the wanderings, 40 years of wanderings, their shoes didn't wear out, their clothes didn't wear out. God provided every part of their material needs for them as they moved under his anointing. In the wilderness, they had the tabernacle and uh, when the Lord moved, lifted the, the, the cloud or the fire off the, the, the tabernacle, they were to pack up and move. And when he stopped, they were to stop and set up camp again. And they did that for 40 years. Sometimes they stayed longer in one place than at other times, and sometimes they moved very quickly. And it must have been <laughs> um, quite difficult if you've just packed, packed, put everything up again, having settled, and the Lord moves again, and you have to pack it all up. But they moved in obedience to, the, to God. And he said, this is to teach you, remember, when you're in the promised land, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And Jesus quotes that to the enemy. So what he's saying is, if, if we live, if I live in obedience to everything that comes from the mouth of God, every instruction, then the provision will be there. That living, just, just living and surviving and having enough to eat and having everything you need is not enough. We have to be living our lives in response to the words that come from God's mouth. And this set the, set the tone of his whole ministry. That he, he says in, in several places, I don't do anything unless I hear my father speaking. He, he lived his life in response to the urgings of the father and of the Holy Spirit within him. He did not live according to his own agenda. And this is how we should live as we follow the pattern of our Saviour, that uh, we recognise, just as he taught them only a little bit later in the Sermon on the Mount, he said in, in chapter 6, uh, verses 25 <coughs> to 34, when he talks to them, about being anxious about what you eat and drink and what you wear. This is the very thing he's talking about here, the provision of daily needs. If we seek first, that's verse 33 of chapter 6, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be yours as well. So that is, that is expressing in different words what this verse says that the priority of our lives is not making sure that we're comfortable and well looked after. The priority of our lives is making sure that we seek first, we put the kingdom first above everything else, that we 
that we, we have our priorities right. We have our eyes fixed on God, the Father, who knows everything we need. And just as he knew everything that the people of Israel needed in the wilderness, and he made sure that they got what they needed all the time in the wilderness. He never failed them. Even when they grumbled and moaned. And... But we, we need to have that confidence in the Father to know that he knows, he knows everything about us. He knows what we need and he is well able to make sure we have enough to sustain us. We have the clothes we need. We have the food we need. We have the protection that we need. He provides for us. We can trust him to do that. We don't need to worry. I mean, what, what bird or flower have you seen worrying out there? <laughs> they don't worry about where the provision is going to be coming from. They don't march up and down in picket lines with little display boards that say, feed me, feed me. God feeds them. God provides for his creation. And we should trust God and be as carefree as that. Not be anxious about anything. When you find yourself being anxious, I don't know, perhaps the younger folk being anxious Will I find a partner, a life partner? Where will I live? What, what does God want me to do? We don't need to be anxious about any of those things. When we need to know these things, God will tell us. As we get older, we shouldn't spend our time worrying about what the future holds and worrying about, about whether our health will fall, fail. Or worrying. About, we shouldn't be worrying because we should be trusting, trusting the Father. The father who takes responsibility for his children and provides for them. And Jesus was not going to turn these loaves of bread, these stones into loaves of bread. He was not going to do anything until the father told him what to do. And that was his life principle. And it should be ours as well. But we should know our scriptures so that we can quote the appropriate scripture to the enemy when he comes against us with whatever temptation. And if you're having trouble at the moment, find a scripture that fits the problem and quote it to the enemy. The only weapon we have against the enemy is the word of God. This book, that is our weapon, the sword. And we have to know it and we have to know how to wield it. We have to be trained up to be a good soldier of Christ. So we need to know our scriptures and we need to know them so that when we're out and about tempted, we can make a quotation from the scriptures to the Lord, to, to the enemy, to back, make him back off. That's enough from me. The sunlight has hit me. Terry's opened a door at the back there and the sun has come in. What a lovely morning. God bless you. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.